So I'm chatting with uh, Lawrence Adam, better known as Mr. Renzo, right here on tonight on M and E TV. Venezuelan born, grew up in Trinidad, exploring the art form, soca, mixing it with Latin. So I want to ask you a bit. No, I want to go back a bit um, because we see Mr. Renzo, you know, mm -hmm. this person, this figure out there. Tell me a bit about your childhood, you know, and and that transition. If you remember, you know, from Venezuela to. Trinidad. Well, I, I I moved to Trinidad as a baby, you know, right. from, yeah, to Trinidad and uh, grew up with my grandparents mm -hmm. in uh, Arima, and I kind of like um, build that old school background when it comes to responsibility and and being focused. So I was never a child growing up that was um, um, leading a different way, different partner. I was always focused no matter what. Uh, but at that point, I didn't know what I wanted to do in life because you mm -hmm. you grow in and you experiencing different things. Yeah. I was an athlete, I used to play football mm -hmm. and that was my first passion to be a footballer, a professional footballer, but uh, I got injured right. and then I was just working, right. pretty much working, just trying to find myself and music came and kind of like... What are uh, some of the challenges you remember as a child, a Venezuelan, you know, child growing up in Trinidad? Well, uh, I've been, I, I never really watched myself as a Venezuelan child yeah. because I grew up in Trinidad up in my, yeah, my entire yeah. life. But um, uh, obviously I've been, uh, you know, categorized yeah, differently yeah, yeah. to yeah. others. But I never really take, took it on too much. Yeah. I always remain focused and, and I know part of life is, is, is finding yourself and yeah. I needed to find myself. Yeah. And, and now, I mean, I must touch and I will ask a body We've, we've seen the influx, of course, over the last few years mm. of Venezuelans coming into Trinidad. Um, how has that been? Do you see that in any way impacting your career with the influx of Venezuelans? Do you now kind of tailor your music to, to, to kind of capture that? Or are you just on your stream that you're going? Yes, I think it, it helped me a lot uh, because every, every day is an event in Trinidad and Tobago, mm -hmm. uh, a Latin event. And... That is a good way to launch your music or perform or do promotion. So I dealt with all those different um, aspects, uh, promoting myself as an artist and, right. and, and just getting out there. So I think it's a perfect uh, launching pad to, to get your music out there. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you, you are bilingual. Yes. Right? Yeah. No, I mean, I know mm -hmm. you were born in Venezuela, but yeah. sometimes, I'm going to tell you something. What well, people don't know about me, and mm. this is not a joke. My, my grandfather is from Venezuela, uh -huh. right? that's my, 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 dad's, my dad's father, and I failed Spanish in school, <laughs> like, I literally failed it, like yeah. as a matter of fact, when they had the parent teachers meeting, yeah. right, for CXC, my teacher told my mom, if you get a four, say tan good, right, <laughs> so I was horrible in Spanish, yeah. um, but you've been always fluent in Spanish, I guess, with your, with your parents being... Um, I actually Venezuela. learned Spanish very, very late because I really? grew, yeah, because I, 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 yeah. I, I grew up with my grandparents who, uh, from, my, from my father's side, who was Trinidadian. Right. So after I left um, primary school, that is when I learned Spanish. And again, you're like, boy, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. supposed to be able to speak Spanish. Yeah. I used to get that, my father. Yeah, so I actually father. learned very late, uh, yeah. uh, later in my um, life, yeah. What's the high point of, of, of the career for Mr. Renzo? I would say the, so big, well, the biggest song was uh, Benny Back featuring Idonia. That one took me all over. Mm -hmm. and, and still to today is, is the biggest song. Uh, that is why I, I um, decided to go back and to work with Mill Beats because he is uh, one of the producers that did the Soka Salsa Rhythm. Right. And we're coming up with a, a, a new Soka, which, is, uh, which, which I'm planning to drop for Cannibal. Nice. Yeah, very hot Soka. Uh, can't wait for that. I'm going to record it um, very soon. And yeah. What's your biggest stage so far as Mr. Renzo in terms of internationally or mm. internationally? That you would say, well, see me, see, they see ton tonight. <laughs> yeah. To me, this is the biggest thing I've done. What would I, what, what would I do? Biggest thing I've done is uh, performing in, in a 60,000 uh, crowd wow. in Colombia. That was when I went on tour with Charlie Black mm -hmm. because uh, myself and Charlie Black, we did a collaboration. So I've been nice. all over Colombia. And when I saw that 60,000 crowd, I was like, wow, this is, this is what it feels like. Yeah. But how do you keep grounded, though? I mean, because you're a good looking, <laughs> you're a good looking red man, and I know they say, well, big up all the red men. You mm. understand that red men ain't good, right? But how, how do you keep grounded? Because I'm sure being an artist, being a musician, mm. being red, being good looking, <laughs> how do you keep grounded and, and not allow that or 
do you allow it to 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 influence you? Is it that that you that you're very much you know what I yes. Living life as it is. Well, I live life, you know. I live life. You know, I, I tried all kind of things. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, but, this is, we have family. Yeah, is, we don't want to tell you everything yeah, that he yeah, tried. But, right? but yeah. yeah. Uh, growing up, you, 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 you must you know, experience different things, but I always remain focused, and, and that was part of my goal to, to get it out there, to get myself, my brand out there. And yeah, so far, it's been doing very well. Yeah. You know, we, we, um, we laid one of our, 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 queen of, um, our queens of music. Um, to rest last last week, um, Denise Plummer. Yes. And everybody who knows Denise Plummer, one of her lowest points would have been when she performed that Skinner Park and she get toilet paper, she get mm. um, suck up orange, pelt on the stage, you know. Mm. Um, if you if you had to be honest, what would have been your lowest point as an artist? My lowest point. <laughs> well, this is a, a, a funny story. Uh, performed in a in an event in South. A few years back, I uh, went on after Ricky, Ricky um, Jai, mm -hmm. and um, I had my set planned out and everything. As I touched on stage, a girl just jumped on stage just so, mm -hmm. and um, jumped on me, and then jumped back down, and then um, the crowd was like, like stunned like this now. <laughs> so I was performing normal, I didn't know what was going on, yeah. but she was just dancing so, not knowing that um, everything was out. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So... <laughs> So the people, the people out there, the crowd wow, thought yeah. that was part of my act. Part of your act, yeah. yeah. So it was like, yeah, like blaming you for that. Yeah, yeah. They were blaming me for that, and, and I had to cover myself. I said, no, no, that's that's um, a random person in the crowd. And yeah. but up to today, people still think that was part of the act. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, lowest point, I'll say, um, it's just the journey into the the, the music industry, uh, trying to get a new song out. Yeah. You know, there's always uh, stages where you go to uh, uh, interview. Uh, radio interview and mm -hmm. you give them the CD and then you see them throw it away. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that could break your heart. And that time I was CD, giving out the CDs and stuff. But I, I made sure and I, I wait and hide a little bit and yeah. watch the scene and I saw them throw away the CD and say, nah, this, this ain't gonna make it, boy, this ain't gonna make it. I, I got a lot of that in my career. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you really have a career that mm -hmm. is, I mean, you may have been in it for, for over, is about 20 years, is it? Yeah, 20 years, right? yeah. And I know you have a lot more in yeah. store. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for, for being with us. I want to leave you with any, any parting word you want to leave to people to, to kind of let them know who Renzo really is, something that people may not know about you. you know? <laughs> in just about 30 seconds, what do you want to tell people about Renzo? Well, you know, I like... Um Long walks on the beach, candlelight dinners. Um, well, that's it, people. Like, that, 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 yeah, yeah, that's it. Long walks on the beach and candlelight. <laughs> well, but he's looking for a wife, right? So that's okay. That I, no, always, uh, always remain humble and, and stay focused and find out what you love in life. Uh, that's what I, 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 I will um, preach to the, the youth out there. Find, find out what is your, your goal and your destiny in life and stick to it. But are you married? Positive. No, married? no I'm not Right, positive. so ladies, if you're interested, you can call 381. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk about after. Mr. Renzo, we're going to come back with a performance from a lady who is going to listen. I hope that this stage can withstand the power that's about to hit here right now. Coming back with the lady Trini Badis Mo out of uh, the East, but taking trying to be good by storm. When we come back tonight on M&E TV. Stand. 